Well, how's it going, everybody? I am so excited. I just got here to the Pronghorn Resort just outside of Bend, Oregon, and I'm about to go into the True Spec facility here to go through an amazing club fitting experience. And I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, when I when I think about True Spec, what, what really hits me is the fact that they don't necessarily go into a club fitting saying, well, this is the set that you need. It's very brand agnostic, meaning they're just going to take you through a fitting to get you the best results regardless of what the uh, club makeup or shaft selection or preconceived bias might be. And what really excites me about it is in my mind, I have this idea of what I think I want, but we're going to go into this finding out exactly what works for my swing. And it's just going to be this incredible experience. So I'm really excited to take you guys along for the ride and show you a little bit about what happens with the true spec club fitting experience. All right, so I'm here with Jason Owens, master club fitter here at TrueSpec at the Pronghorn Golf Resort in Bend, Oregon. And uh, Jason, why don't you tell us a little bit about the train or club fitting philosophy and what we're about to get into today? Sure. First off, thanks, Blaine, for having me. Um, spending some time with me this morning. It's going to be a good morning. We're going to have a lot of fun here at TrueSpec. We do um, we do a, a, a in depth custom fitting process. It takes upwards of two to three hours to go through it. We're a brand agnostic, performance-driven company. Um, we build everything down at our headquarters in Scottsdale, and we do it to the tightest tolerances in the industry. Um, you know, and, and it's pretty interesting to take a, a client through the whole process. Um, it can be, it can be overwhelming at first, thinking you're going to hit 600 balls, but you really don't. You probably maybe hit 100 balls, 120, but it's extremely fun to figure out what really fits best and performs best. Typically, it's not what a player thinks they should play, um, but it's it's pretty fun to figure that out. Awesome, so Jason, real quick for those that might not know, what is what does brand agnostic mean? Brand agnostic means that we favor no one particular company. So literally, we we would represent every brand possible. Um, brands even that most people don't get access to, such as Mira Heads or Epon or. Um, Srixon, PXG, Mizuno's, Titleist. I mean, you know, we have literally 30,000 different combinations of things of head, shaft um, that we can get into. Um, and it's, that's why it's, it takes a little bit of time to kind of take people through it. Sure. So what about, you know, I have a set here. Yep. How does the set that I'm playing play into what we're about to do? Well, first off, after we do the initial interview and ask about your game and skill level, what are your goals, um, limitations physically. We just get to know each other really well. And then I take 10, 15 minutes and I, I blueprint your entire bag. So what that means, this is our blueprint station. So I'm gonna check loft lie, length, swing weight, frequency of shaft, um, and then how that club, it'll, it'll get put into a blueprint and then we get to see kind of how it's mapped out. Were they built correctly? Are they consistent between gaps, lengths, weights, et cetera? Um, and that's really what sets TrueSpec apart from everybody else is, you know, maybe there's only one piece of the build that's off, but it's important for sure. any player, not just a good player, but um, higher handicap level players, especially when people are learning to take some lessons in coaching and a coach is asking them to do something specific, but yet that club can't match or line up with what that player is doing. That's why fitting and coaching and teaching go hand in hand. Fitting is extremely important. Awesome, and for those that don't know, is, is this the only true spec? There's 17 locations in the country, 23 locations globally. Um, we've opened several this last few months, but in the Northwest, even on the West Coast, this is only one of three locations, I think. So definitely the only location in the Pacific Northwest. And Pronghorn Resort is amazing. It's a definitely a first class facility for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely, no, I'm excited to be here. If anybody hasn't been into the Bend area, I try to get down here from Portland as much as I can because it's just, it's pretty awesome. So, all right, so we're, we're about to get into it. What's yeah. the first step? First step, we're gonna get into blueprinting. I'm gonna start with irons and just start checking things. It'll take 10, 15 minutes. Usually I'll probably have you hit some shots as you start to get warmed up and then and then we'll take a look at how it's put together and, and we'll start capturing some stuff on TrackMan. Awesome.
Yeah. So we'll start out with your driver. And so if we cruise across this line to this line where it's 45 yeah. and drop down one BPM, you see it's slightly higher yeah. between yeah. single X and two X. So it's a very much of a stiff flex Okay. Um, at that length. If that makes sense. Yes. Um, your so it's stiffer than what the shaft indicates it should be. It says it's it's an MT seven X, so yeah. it says it's in graphite design X range. Now, the interesting thing is Oban or you know Villain or something might be different than what graphite's designs parameters are for X. Okay. So like like this X here in Villain at forty five inches is only two fifty six. See that? So okay. it's it's literally like eleven cycles per minute softer than yours. So you have more of a standard chart that you're coming off, regardless of what the brands. Yes. Yeah, so specs the, so are. the universal frequency yeah. chart has okay. been around for a really long time, and it's based on down here. It's based on the length of the golf club, and then obviously what frequency. The higher the frequency, the more. Well, if I was a long drive guy and I'm playing something more than forty five, I would need technically a different frequency for it to perform the same. Correct. Yeah, and, and I mean every shaft has a bend and flex point, right? And, yeah. And ultimately, at TrueSpec, what we do, there's not a very tight tolerance amongst the different mm. CPMs amongst the same shaft that we pull. Let's say we pull 25 Oban Kiyoshis, and out of those 25, if there's an outlier, we'll toss it or give it back. If if the the tolerance isn't tight enough, we'll just ship the whole thing back and okay. tell them to redo it. I mean, that, the, the most important thing about custom fitting is if you get fit for a suit, the guy or gal takes the specs. The specs are easy to kind of capture and, and gather, but when they go to build that suit, the person stitching it, if they can't stitch it correctly, it's still not a very well fit right. suit. So in golf, if you can't control the build, then you're, it, it's, that's okay. the most important part of the process. So for somebody at home that's going through this process, then it, you, you say there's a potential where they may get fit based off what the manufacturer's specs are. Then the club fitter says, well, because your, your body, you're actually a half inch shorter. Like I'm typically, that's usually where I fall. And I'm, I'd be curious sure. to see where I fall today. But if we just took a manufacturer's spec, cut it a half inch, technically that frequency changes. 100%. And now my fitting's off. Correct. And people get, they start to change the size or the material of grip, which changes head weight. Mm. Um, some people will lengthen or cut down a club, which changes the frequency and the flex point. Um, and overall gram weight of a club, you know. Um, and then <clears throat> commonly, if they have a, if, let's say somebody breaks a shaft on the plane and they have that single club reshafted. Um, and now you don't really know what that new shaft is being put in at what frequency and stuff. D depends on where you take it to get done, but um, that's where we run into issues. And we have our headquarters is in Scottsdale, and it's a very um, tight knit group down there. And we have one builder that does every whole order. So no matter what it is, if it's irons, wedges, a full bag, whatever one builder controls the whole sure. build. And then it goes through quality control six times. So it's awesome. kind of, now you're not only having just one builder's eyes on it, it gets checked by multiple different places. So this <laughs> shaft is the old YS85. I mean, I played the YS6 and driver a long yeah. time ago. And it is the plus, right? So the 85S, does the plus on this old shaft mean that's a plus? I think so. I think so too. So, 80, so it's- But it's not, performing nearly, at, not, even not even close to an S. It's halfway between R and senior. So that's and interesting. And they're an S plus. Yeah, so this was supposed to be an S plus, but it's actually an X plus. Correct. So, so here I am so far, three wood is an X, driver's an X plus, the eyes are an X plus, and here I am with almost a senior yeah. hybrid. So I guess for everybody that's thinking about going through this process, Let's just say you do have a set that you really love. You just invested in this this one that it just fits your whatever it is. You could always bring it in and say, "I know I just got this head because I love this head, but I want to see if it's fit right." And chances are it could be off, and you guys fit it. Yeah. At the same time, though, 
what I think we're going to go through is, yes, we have a set. I'm not necessarily attached to them. Yeah. I just want to find out what's the best, sure. what's going to fit me. Yeah. And we might look at, I mean, it's happened before where I can't beat ball speed or feel or write the right trajectory, sure. but yet the shaft portion isn't correct. Mm. And so that's where we would introduce a, a retro build then. You cool. know, obviously, you don't want to lose ball speed. Sure. So um, at the end of the day, I know regardless of what route we take, it's yep. going to be the best fit for my swing. 100%. Okay, let's get you hitting some shots. Yeah, that's a good one. Can we just, can we just do that five times? <laughs> oh man. You play half inch short. Yeah. You have very good. You have tour average club head speed. So when I see that much club head speed, and I'm gonna assume that the carry and total distance would not be your number one priority. Like you hit the ball plenty far. Sure, right? exactly. Yeah. Some people that is right. They don't generate enough club head speed. They say, I just my clubs aren't going anywhere anymore. Sure. They're older product, etc. But for you, distance is not the primary. Yeah. Target. I just, I need to keep it in play for so sure. So this grouping is a little bit. Oh yeah. It's it's a it's really good uh, window trajectory control. Okay. Pretty good, I would say. I mean, ideally, if this was a stream of water coming out of a hose, yeah. we would want those landing areas to be a little tighter mm -hmm. and clean up, not hit too many windows there. Um, but you hit the grouping, it's pretty good in the face, so it's not heavily toe, it's not heavily heel. Sure. So 37 inches, on, I mean, at the length you're playing, I think is really good. 88, you're looking for 100 to 120. Yeah. Across the board, with mm. driver down for everything. So your highest was 95. Plus or minus seven. Oh, and today's a high day. And You're going a little higher than normal. It's a high day. I want maybe just a fraction softer shaft to sure. make the shaft like do it assist for me. a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah. and not get too crazy on spin. So now we get to go pick heads. You're a player, in my opinion, that likes to move the ball both directions. Okay, and you hit the ball in the middle of the face, so you don't necessarily, in my book, need to play something that's gain enhancement or improvement or or just in the offset category. Sure. So I'm going to go through and pull a couple heads. Can I throw a bias in? 100%. You get to pick anything you want. HMB. Is that no, awesome. that's, maybe that's, that's, that's the, I pulled the MP20, the original. Yes, that's, the, okay, that's yeah. why I didn't see it. I, I'd just be curious, because coming into it, my bias yeah. is that guy. So no rhyme or reason, you're going to hit three balls yeah. with each one. If you hit a poor one, I'll say one more. Sure. But ideally, we just want to see how that, how this combination feels and performs. So at least we know sure. the gram way the shafts the same as you've been playing. And if I hit one that stands out, do, well, do we make yes. note? Yeah, 100%. Okay. Initial reaction, top line's a little thick. Yep. But oh, we can throw that one out. Okay. There we go. Okay. Coming over to the six foot, so identifying for me, not good, not good. Not we moved good. the wrong way. Yeah, in those in those four columns to the right, all those four right there, we are we're going backwards from where yeah. you were. Okay. Makes sense? Yeah, absolutely. So, so to me, this head isn't outperforming what you're currently playing. Sure. Okay. C B. Same shaft, same everything. Initial reaction before I swing, I like the top line look. Yep. It's probably because I used to have some of these in my bag, so it, it's already in my eye. Uh, but I do like that, that thinner top line. I'll take that. Feel any day. Definitely a higher, at least what my eye sees, is that was much higher than the last club we tried. That's better. That's the ball flat. I like tiny little fade. Better contact. Definitely higher. All right, let's try to get this one. Same shot. Let's get it to land on that white flag. All right, come on over. Let's take a look at this. Super spinny. 
6,500, higher peak height, 96, over your, I believe, 88. Okay. Oh, um, wow, look at the carry, though. Correct, nowhere. So it's high because it's ballooning. Correct. So I mm. said earlier, I do want higher peak height. Yes. I wanted to get to 15 something. Yep. We did that. 46 landing angle, we did that. Okay, but I but the spin. Yeah. So if you look at the side angle on these, you could see it like rise, 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 and then drop out of the air. So. So it's. So it's just spinning for whatever reason. That's a really spinny head. Sure. And we haven't changed the shaft. No, same, same shaft, shaft, same everything. Okay. Cool. So here's the Titleist concept. It's a small. It's the player. Ooh. Well, it's I'm excited for. Shelf up. Yeah, I'm excited for this because I haven't. Uh, I have not hit one of these before. Right off the bat, it fits my eye. We'll see if, if we can control the ball flight, but yeah. as far as, as, as looks go, for me, that's right on. Yeah, initial reaction first shot. I like the height, I like the ball flight. That's a miss, but it's a good miss. Right, let's try, let's see if we can turn one over. I'll take it. I lost it, but I know Trackman still sees it. Yeah, come take a look. This one's pretty good. You did yep. want to move some different shot patterns. The spin's the same. Yep. Higher peak height. Okay. Higher launch. Higher launch. Same landing. Th yep. These are actually the same here, but a little higher peak height. Pretty so it's good. still fairly tight, especially for not quite centering it up. Yeah, and I like the I like the dispersion. Yeah, absolutely. I like that it's. Now you're actually missing it four feet left, plus or minus 17 feet. So yeah. it's the most accurate so far. And MP20, this is kind of what you're curious about. Yeah, yeah, I'm a little biased toward it, only because I had a good experience at the, uh, the PGA show in Vegas a yeah. couple months ago. Good. This is this is right up there with that concept iron in terms of how it looks. Fits my eye. I like the height. It almost looks like that one fell out of the air a little, though. Yeah. Better. It's going to be high right. Let's see if we can get a draw here. We'll try to turn one over. Well, I got to turn over, but that's not the one that we want to turn over. We'll go one more. Best feeling shot. Yeah. I don't think it's going to catch like the concept. No. But see, it's middle of the face, but it's the blinking one there, so it's not even as good as the others up here. So the best one with this was still not as good as Correct. one of the worst ones with the other. Correct. So this is really cool because my bias would be, let me just get this head and make it work. Yeah, right. But I still, mean, all in all, it's it's half a club shorter. It's five yards shorter. Yeah. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, initial reaction looks probably my favorite looking one out of the bunch so far. But then again, it is tiny, but I like that. Way off. There we go. Nice. So I like the ball flight, the tiny little fade. So the interesting thing here, fastest ball speed of the day. Really? 130. And right, I did hit the middle of the face. You hit the dead center of the face. Perfect spin, perfect peak height. Uh, wow. Almost 10 yards more carry. Okay. Because that, all right, so we know what happens when we pure it. Or maybe maybe we're just going to keep puring it. There's a miss. But I'd be curious to see how bad the miss is. So the miss is off. Okay. So while the best have been the best, the miss has been way off. Do I want to maybe give up? Three to five yards of the best of the best to keep my dispersion down when I don't hit it well. And have higher on the line. Yeah. Another miss. Yeah. This is a better miss, though. Yeah, for sure. I like that. Yep. High on the face, but I like the ball flight. Yep. It's the fastest ball speed on that mirror. Yep. Same club head speed. So it's virtually what you're currently playing, a couple yards longer is all. Okay, cool. So what are we swinging here this time? Now you're going to hit a ping I-500. Okay. Yeah, first reaction is 
I didn't hit it well, but it still seemed to jump off the face. Let's see if we can get one pure here. Higher, bigger miss. It still seems to jump off the face, though. Pretty hot. 130 ball speed there. I lost it in the clouds. Felt OK. So the track man got it, looked at it. It's, gonna, it's right on it, but it'll, it'll kick back. It's going to be like pretty, just slightly right. 132 ball speed. Yeah, look at that smash factor, too. It's, okay, it's jumping there. off the face. Yep. Low spin, high peak height. All these four columns are perfect. It's just, right. it's just, it's shooting off the face. Yep. There we go. Look, you have two bombs <laughs> and then two mediocre ones. So the misses were still on par the with my were good shots. Level with the other good shots. Wow. You carry 189, and that was 196 on average. Right, we're gonna lay into this one. This is going to be the one where I'm going to try to swing half a club farther so that it's either going to give me some good data or we know how bad the miss can be. Felt solid. I think I see it going high right. So you did get into it. 95 plus speed. Speed went up. It's going to land up here. See? So even that one that didn't quite feel solid was still very solid. So so it may not spin more, but it's launching higher, it's landing steeper, and it's, and it's going a club mile, farther. Eight mile an hour faster ball speed. So to me, that head's the leader in the pack. Sure. We have two more and we know the, the misses are still good misses. All right, so this is the TaylorMade P760. This reminds me, looks wise, I used to play the Callaway X Tours yep. back in my high school days. This reminds me visually of that. Still distance wise though, right in the middle of the pack. Way off the toe, but still a good miss. If that's the miss, I'm okay with that. A little power cut. Yeah. Okay, bring it back. I don't like it. Has potential, a lot of ball speed, but it's not not where the others are. So I'm definitely interested in this one because I've heard Good things about PXG. Yeah. I've never hit one. Still, for how much I missed it, it seemed like it came off pretty hot. Better flight. I like the little cut. This is the ping. ping blue. Blue. Oh, okay. Very good looking it's got my attention. Yeah, pretty small. It's small. It's got a square toe. It reminds me of the, um, what, what did they used to have? The S, SG? S58 yeah, or S56. Yeah, though, that's what it reminds me of initially, just looking at it. Yeah. All right, let's start off a little butter cut. That's better. Super high, yep. but it's still just it's shooting just off. Same loft as yours. Yep. That's the highest ball I think I've hit today, at least visually. I'd be curious what the data says. 95 feet high, so it's okay. similar to the ping, but it was 5,800 spin. Right, let's try a little draw. Best shot today. 100%. 134 smash, 141. I mean, 141 to 134 ball. Oh, yeah. That one, I. Let's go play on the mini tours with that shot right there. That's perfect. 5,300 spin, yeah. 104 peak height. That's as good as I'm going to hit it, too. Right. So I guess now let's just see how the misses are. Yep. Because that's, oh, that's as good as that one's going to get. So let's try that same shot. That one was just this butter draw. I liked that one. Let's do it again. Thin. I got. For, for being skinny? Yeah. Oh, and there it is. So the dispersion's still not that far off. No. So it misses well. And that's, we both know golf is just a game of who can miss the best. There it is. There's the same quality shot that drew before. That one was with the fade. So now I know best of the best draw versus fade. Yeah, and they're right next to each other. Yep. Yeah. And it feels really good for uh, 
I, don't, I, I hope this doesn't come off when I say it that way. I don't think of Ping as a forged club company. Yeah. And yet this is a forged club from Ping, yep. which is really cool. Yeah, that felt really good. Yeah, it that's right next to OK. So unfortunately, <laughs> like that combination beats the concepts yeah. by a long shot. So, so you see how we started to identify the white is your club. Yeah. Lateral dispersion, OK? Average 15 feet right, plus or minus 37. The blueprint averaged 17 feet left, mm -hmm. plus or minus three feet. Okay, if you look at just oops, just sheer data, which is what we are as a company. Yeah. 126 ball speed with your gamer, 133 ball speed with the blueprint. Yeah. A little more clubhead speed too, even after you've hit 58 shots. Um, you average 189 carry, this is 198 carry. So you, as a pro picking up nine yards, when that's not even a column that you no. would say I would like. You've got perfect spin here, higher peak height, good launch, better landing angle, 10 more yards in the air than yours, but and way more ball speed. I, I like that combination for you 100%. Now, ultimately what I would tell you is, like if you looked at these two heads, and had to pick, you would probably pick the blueprint. I would, yeah. Right. So I would, and it just this is the way my game works, but if it was down to these two, yeah. and I had to give up three to five yards for the comfort of what I'm looking at, I would do that. Right. So we've hit nine clubs, was it? Yep, nine different heads. And so the right column here, were just for me, it's not that these are the wrong clubs for you if you're watching this, it's just these didn't fit my swing. There were some close ones, there were not some close ones. These were moving in the right direction, but at the end of the day, there's our winner right there. Awesome, so Jason, that was a really incredible experience. I think the big thing for me is what I thought was going to be the right club was not anywhere near what the result was. So if anybody else wants to go through this experience, they want to get in with you and go yep. through that same thing, what do they do? How do they get in touch with you? You can you can do multiple ways. You can go to TrueSpec Golf's website. Um, you can contact customer service down there. They route it in um, to me. Mm -hmm. You can also sign up online directly at TrueSpec. You can call them in, and we have an amazing customer service team. You can call me directly. Um, my number is 971-404-9787. Um, that's my mobile. That's actually the only phone that comes into the studio here. Um, and my email is jason.owens at truespecgolf.com. So you can reach me at that place too. But it was a pleasure awesome. having you out today. Yeah. I mean, we could have spent even a few more hours and got through a little bit more. That's awesome. Better. I really appreciate the time. I'm, yeah. I'm definitely going to be on back. And now it's just a matter of let's get the clubs in my bag and then we'll go out and play with them. I'm excited. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks Jason. I appreciate your time.